So, ladies and gentlemen, he is a prominent social media coach. He has helped thousands of people around the world. Give it up for Jonathan Hawkins. Thank you, thank you. Is it fun? So, I'm here to tell you how to tell your story through social media, but first off, what I want to say is, storytelling is phenomenal. I do it all the time, and that's the reason why you might hear a little horse in my throat now, because I've been telling stories since I arrived here, and truly for you to understand exactly how to tell your story, I want to tell you a little bit about mine. I was an Army intelligence officer uh, in the Army, being trained to be an interrogator at Guantanamo Bay. And when I was being taught how to interrogate people, there was one thing that always popped up to me. And it was not that, not that the person didn't want to say what I wanted them to say, but I wasn't using the right words and I wasn't coming across in the right way. And so, when I'm telling you this story and I'm showing you all these different slides and I'm going to show you examples on how you can actually tell your story through social media, what I want you to, to know is that the brain uses two parts of the cortex when you tell a fact. For me to come up here and give you a lot of statistics, and I will give you some statistics, when I give you a fact, your brain only triggers two portions. When I give you a story, your brain will trigger five. Now why is that? Well, because when you tell somebody a story, not only are you telling the story, but that person is envisioning themselves in the story. That person is saying, how can I be just like that family that moves away and I want to be the one you know, with the baseball team and the barbecue and sitting next to the fireplace watching a movie. They don't want to hear three bedrooms, two baths, 1,500 square feet, because that's just a fact. And the more facts that you tell, you're losing a lot of potential. And so when it comes to social media and when it, when it comes to storytelling, remember that, not only through my talk, Yesterday, we, had, we heard a, a phenomenal speaker and he started giving a scenario about dogs. And when I went back to my room, I said, I'm so glad that he talked about the dog aspect, which initially somebody said, why did he talk about dogs? Well, then he related that back into real estate and the person says, now it makes sense. The reason it made sense was because you fit yourself into the story and you visualize the dog going from one bowl to the next to the next. My name is Jonathan Hawkins, like I said. Uh, I, I was an Army intelligence officer, and then I actually had the opportunity to uh, move back to Southern California after being in many parts of the country. And uh, I went to UCLA to get another degree in Arabic and Islamic studies. And while I was there at UCLA, I had the, the fortune to uh, to meet just a phenomenal person. And uh, I started working with Joyce Roy Coble Banker, and that was my introduction into real estate. For those who don't know her, she's usually ranked within the top five to 10 brokers in the world. And so my introduction into real estate was selling Rihanna's and Jennifer Aniston's house and all of these crazy things that were going on. But what really stood out amongst a top broker and what stands out amongst the top brokers is it's not about all the fancy things. It's not about all of the new technology and gadgets and the pennies. It's about telling your story, living your story, embracing your story, and allowing that to shine through. For her, her audience resonated with her. It wasn't about anything. I mean, we really didn't do anything as far as you know, technology was concerned. It was, here's a list of the clients, love them, and that's all you have to do. In uh, one, of the, uh, one of the numbers got popped out, but uh, in 1987, on the left-hand side, 22% of people found their house through a newspaper. So they would actually go into the newspaper to find their house. In 2018, 44% of people 
bought a house by finding it online. And so when I'm telling you uh, to tell your story, I, I want you to tell your story, but I also want you guys to have a great business as well. And I, I personally believe if you have a great business, but you have a terrible life, your business is probably not that good. So my goal is to create a business and life that you love and allow that to resonate through your social media. 77% of agents, according to the National Association of Realtors, used social media last year. 22% didn't and 1% didn't know if they had a page or not. I, I, don't, I don't know exactly where, where that stat came from, but um, of, the, of the three bigger platforms, Facebook was used by 97% of agents, LinkedIn 59% and Instagram 39%. And that's, that stat was actually very shocking to me because I thought that the Instagram value would be a lot higher. But what that shows is an opportunity for you guys to tap into something that's not actually being utilized. A lot of people will tell you that it's great to use Instagram, but when you leave this conference, you're gonna realize a lot of people are not actually using Instagram. And the, there's, a, there's a very few amount of people that are actually using Instagram and actually telling a story. So there's four types of stories. There's the home tour, the home story. This is for your listings, your buyers. There is the community story. This is for restaurants and parks. There is the brand story. This is your team, this is your culture, this is your office. And there's a personal story. And I'm talking today most about personal story, but you guys can relate any of this to the other three categories as well. Can anybody guess what this number means? No, nobody? How many people, say that again? How many people are engaging on social media? Okay, any, anybody else wanna give it a shot? How many are using video? Percentage of personal story, anybody else? Say that again? Age, unfortunately, it's not any of those, but good guesses, thank you. 47% according to the National Association's 2018 Digital Age Report, 47% of leads last year were generated through social media. 47%. Social media was ranked as the top level of quality leads as well. But of that 47%, 16%, 16% came through ads. Let me repeat that. Of the 47%, only 16% came through ads. What does that mean? People are connecting with the organic posts. People are connecting with the stories. People are connecting with you and family. Why? Because they can fit themselves into the story. When you continually push ads, 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 and somebody goes and you have no story, how's that person going to fit in? There's four fundamentals that I like to talk about when it comes to storytelling. The first is relevance. And, and you can also substitute the word relevance for relatable. How relatable are you? If somebody goes onto your social media pages, are they gonna feel like they know you? Are they gonna feel like, hey, he, he also goes to Disneyland, he goes to the park, he does this with his family. Are you gonna, are you gonna be able to show that in your social? The second is your structure. I believe every great story has a beginning, a middle, and an end. Wouldn't you all agree? And so when it comes to the structure, a lot of people are always in that call to action phase, that end phase. Lead, 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 buy a house, buy a house, sell a house, sell a house, buy a house, buy a house. And they've never created that story because they forgot about the beginning and the middle. Number three is simplicity. When it comes to storytelling, it doesn't have to be complex. Your story is your story. 
And it's very simple to tell your story. And the fourth, which is the biggest one for me, and the one that I see unfortunately done uh, in, a, in a drastically wrong way is authenticity. And the reason why I say it's done drastically in the wrong way is because a lot of people that are storytelling are telling somebody else's story. I'll repeat that again. The people, a lot of people that are storytelling are, are telling somebody else's story. They're pretending to be somebody that they're not. They are wanting to be somebody that they're not. And they continue to push out this narrative. Meanwhile, they truly know this is not me. This is not what makes me happy. This is not what I like. And so when it comes to storytelling, I think authenticity, excuse me, is huge. Your story is your story. Everyone in this room has one. Whether that be a good story, a bad story, in between, your life is made up of stories. If you have to Google what to post, you're doing it wrong. If you are going into your social channels, and then you go back into Google and say, what should I post on social media? You're doing it wrong. Why? Because I just told you that the brain activates five parts when you tell a story, and only two when you tell a fact. So when you go into Google and you say, what post should I post? It's gonna tell you to do this type of post. You're gonna do that type of post and you're gonna move on and you're gonna check the box and said, I did my post for the day. When you tell a story, your story, through social media, you never have to Google what to post. Why? Because it's your story. It's what you like. It's what you don't like. It's who you resonate with. It's who you don't resonate with. And if you're for everyone, for no one. So the next time that I see anybody going back or, or, or even asking, you know, what exactly should I post? Take out your phone and say, this is where I'm at. This is what I'm doing. This is who I'm with. Why? Because when your audience is seeing that in your social media, they're going to try and fit themselves into this. And what I mean by that, I'll take a step back, is if I were to pull out my phone and say, hey, look, I'm in New Orleans, I'm here at this phenomenal event, and these are the people that I'm connecting with and growing with, why? And, and why am I bringing them to my room to do podcasts with me, why? Because those are the people that I've connected with through social media who think, like, and act the same way I do. I had Michael Burt in my room last night, John Cheplak in my room last night, and the reason that they were in my room last night was because I connected to them through social media. When they went onto my channel for the first time, my page for the first time, they said, I'm assuming they said this, they said, that person's like me. He likes the way, or excuse me, he likes the things that I like. He acts sort of in some of the ways that I do, but at the, at the core of it, he believes what I believe. And I believe in helping people. In uh, 2013, President Obama gave me his uh, community service award called the Call to Service Award, which was the award for uh, volunteer and community service hours. And that's my passion, to help people. A lot of people come to me and say, I need help with ads, I need help with posting, I need help with this, I need help with that. But when I really dive into what they need help with, it's telling their story. When somebody can message me and say, I'm sorry I didn't turn in your assignment yesterday, and then in the next paragraph says, the reason I didn't turn it in was because I was just diagnosed with cancer and I didn't have the time to turn it in, that's an issue. So for me, my mission is to get all of those stereotypes that are out there in the real estate industry the cheesy car salesman, the person that drinks 24-7, all of those stereotypes and crush them. 
How am I going to do that? I need your help. I need you to help me help the industry by telling your story. Who are you? What are you doing? If you're working very hard for your client, that's great. Show people you're working very hard. Don't assume that they know that you're prospecting all day, that you're door knocking in 110 degree weather. It's okay to show that. That is your story. That's what you're doing. I told you that the brain activates five different parts and I, and I hopefully have uh, shown you that storytelling is something that you guys should be doing. So here are some creative ways that you can tell your story through social media. The first one is to show your brand's human side. People connect with people. They don't connect with three bedroom, two bath, 1,500 square feet, buy now. Hey, are you ready to buy now? What about now? Do you know anybody else ready to buy now? How about now? They connect with people. On the left-hand side, that's me, that's my son, that's my wife, on the, on the right again. Every single listing presentation that I've gone on, they've always said the same thing. How's your son? How's your wife? Your vacation looks phenomenal. What are you up to next? What's the next plan? What's the next goal? When we got into the actual presentation itself, they would say, okay, now tell us all about your marketing. And, and I said, what, what specific questions do you have? Well, you know, we see you all over the place and you're doing this and you're doing that and we know you love this and we know you like that and you know you don't like this and you don't like that and you did this and you did that, so what do we need to talk about? Oh, actually, we already know what you do through marketing. Why? Because you're showing us through social. The second is to share the story of your brand. And your brand is not what you think it is, it's what the people think it is when you're not talking about it. Your brand is your culture, your brand is your team, your brand is what you believe in, and I firmly believe in who you hire truly matters. Not just in real estate, but for any industry. Now, for me, to go on to social media and just post a few words saying who you hire truly matters would be great. That would be a fact, right? Can, can everybody agree with me that who you hire truly matters? There's a difference between a 1% person who does nothing and a professional like yourselves that deserves a, a higher commission because you're doing more and you're helping more and you're getting your clients more? Yeah, that's a fact though. When I tell you that who you hire truly matters, it would be great for me to put a few words on a screen, but when I show you behind the scenes, when I show you what I'm doing, what my friends are doing, what my network does, and how that relates to you, you fit yourself into the story. And the more and more times that you fit yourself into the story, the more and more you trust me. And the more and more that you trust me, the higher probability I have of, of getting an actual client. So everybody has stories and everybody has a story. But not a lot of people post their story. And what I mean by that is there's a lot of rules out there that are funny to me. You're only allowed to post so many words on this platform. If you use too many hashtags, the algorithm is gonna mess your story up. If you say that word, this program is not gonna like it, and then that one is gonna bump you here, and you're gonna do this, and you're gonna do that, who cares? Your story is your story, and you have to tell it. And what I mean by that is, a great example is, a lot of people would go onto Facebook and say, you know, most people are not gonna read a paragraph, why would you post a paragraph, that's too long. Who cares? Because I know that the people that connect with me, they have read the paragraph. Why? They talk about it when I meet with them. I know that when I do a podcast, it's more than just a podcast. I'm trying to figure out the story of the next individual and I'm trying to help them tell their story. Why? So I can connect with more people. Story elements are huge and for me, helping others with social media, um, this, is a, this is not an example of how you're going to tell your personal story like this. Hopefully your story is not an Instagram hack. Um, 
but this is just to show you that you can break up a story into different segments to move somebody along in the story, okay? So when you post an ad, you usually just post an ad, right? When you post a story, a lot of you just post a story. I'm here at the conference. Great, what does that mean? Story elements are huge because you can sequence them at like story. So for somebody to go into uh, Instagram hack, uh, don't like the color options, the next thing is gonna tell you you can use any color with this one, and then the next and it keeps going. Well then, now you're gonna say, hey, that guy is really good at social media. And it's not that I'm really good at social media, it's that I told you a story, and I brought you along that journey that you assumed that I was good at something. You assumed I knew exact, I know everything about Instagram. He's the expert, he's number one, why? Because I continue to put you into a story. Now, I'm definitely not putting you into a story and then just making everything up, um, but I just wanted to put these out there to show you that stories are very powerful. Write your story in a Facebook. On the left-hand side, that was the best video I ever posted at the real estate agent. It was me and my son, my wife was in it, my military background was in it, my client's testimonials were in it, community was in it, and every person who watched that video, labeled who is Jonathan Hawkins, instantly knew who I was. Why? I told them a story. I told them what I like, what I don't like, who I am. Therefore, if I'm something, I'm not the other, right? If you're for everyone, you're for no one. And when somebody would watch that video, they would instantly tell me a lot of things, actually. They would tell me quite a bit. But they would, they would, um, they would, they would all say, man, I know exactly what you're talking about. I know what you're feeling right now. I know exactly uh, the place that you went to. And we started to connect that way. Long form video is huge. And, and long form video is being underutilized, in my personal opinion. Long form video allows you to tell a story, but I think that too many long form videos that are out there are in one part of the story, usually in the end. Take, for example, a listing video. If you're showing just the house, how are you telling a story? How are you creating that experience and that visual narrative in somebody's mind if you just show the three bedrooms, the two baths, and maybe you have the, you have the facts pull up on the screen as well? That's not gonna work. But if you can show them what it would be like to move into the house, what it was like for the previous owner, where they're going, all of the different things in the community, you're gonna resonate a lot more through long term video. Going live is huge, uh, and it's a phenomenal opportunity um, for you to connect with people. So last year, I just started going live uh, for this specific series, which I called Real Advice Real Estate. And uh, we went live every week, and we brought in uh, somebody to talk about advice and give advice to the real estate industry. The reason that I did it is because I said I was going to do it, so I did it. Well, if you were to look at the, uh, the videos on the left-hand side and compare them to where World Advice is now, you would be drastically shocked. The fact that I've had some phenomenal people now on that show, which is now a live show, only, only goes to re-emphasize the fact that that show grew because I talked about things that people wanted to hear, but I told them in a different way. So I like to do things differently. I like to be unique, and uh, one of those things I was telling somebody the other day is I would walk into an open house and I would take my business cards and I would just throw them on the floor. Yeah, I would throw them on the floor. And I would take a stack of 10 cards and I'd put those 10 on the toilet seat. 
Then I'd go back, and as everybody came in, they would say, hey, you know there's some cards on the floor? You know there's cards on the toilet? I'd go at the end of the open house, I'd count them, four, five cards left, knowing that they grabbed them. Why did I leave the cards? It wasn't because I wanted them to, to actually grab the card, come to me, and, and actually um, say, I'm ready to buy the house because I found the card on the toilet. Uh, that wasn't going to happen. But what I did is I allowed their mind and their brain to see things differently. When you walk into somebody's open house and you see the same thing over and over and over, which is usually an agent standing behind a desk with their cards in one place, then you're accustomed to knowing that those are where the cards go. So when somebody walks into a house and they see cards on a toilet, their brain activates, that shouldn't be there, let's look at it. So when they look at your cards on the toilet, and then they look at your cards on the staircase, and then they look at your cards on the master bedroom pillow, guess what? They've seen you many more times than the next agent. Why? Because you forced their brain to do so. Storytelling allows you to do the same thing. Curating user-generated content goes back into what do your people actually want? What value are you providing through social media? Because if you're only providing facts, you're not gonna resonate with anybody. So I, I always ask people, um, if you're following me on Instagram, hopefully you all are after this, Facebook, wherever it may be, anybody who asks me a question, I answer it, um, but I like to do it a little bit differently. Uh, I like to really answer the question, and I had so many people continue to reach out to me about social media and social media and social media, and the, 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 the common question was, you know, how do I set up an ad? How do I do this? How do I do that? How do I do this? And that's where I found those, those cancer stories. That's where I found those recovering drug addict stories. That's where I found the single mom who's actually telling her kid to shut up so that way she can try and get a new listing. Those are the, the people that are continuing to just push their stories aside in order to chase something. Social media is phenomenal, we have to chase it. That's incorrect. When telling your story and when you use storytelling through social media, Again, this is a phenomenal slide. And what it shows you is, on the left-hand side, you have a gray bar, you have a whitish bar and a blue bar. On the right, the same thing. The, the gray bars are actually the exact same ads, the white bars are the exact same ads, and the blue bars are the exact same ads. Um, on the left-hand side, excuse me, that shows an ad that told a story. On the right-hand side, that shows an ad that told a fact. And you can see that every single ad was not only higher, it was, I think it's like almost double the amount of engagement and double the amount of leads that were coming in. Why? Because you walked them through a story. Your story can be told and your story should be told. And here's a, here are two other phenomenal platforms to tell stories. Stories can be broken up. You don't have to tell your story in one huge video. You don't have to tell your story in one post. So what I would recommend when it comes to the playlist on Facebook and YouTube is to break those up into different categories. You can break them up into the four types of stories I told you about, which are the home stories, the personal stories, the brand stories, and the community stories. You're not necessarily going to call them that but you know hey, this is where those types of things go in. Why? Because when somebody watches them, you're just continuing that story. Continuing that story. Continuing to provide value, and at some point, should a person want to buy or sell a house, hopefully you've told so many different stories that provided value to them that they would envision themselves as part of the story to want to work with you. I want everybody to read this slide. You're not working towards being happy, you're work, excuse me, you're being happy and then reinforcing it. 
When it comes to social media, I said earlier that too many people are posting somebody else's story. And I was doing the exact same thing. I became a, a real estate broker. I was actually granted a waiver in California to get a brokerage license early. I opened up a brokerage and I was so consumed with success, what success meant. I'm only 27 years old. At 22 is when I got my license. At 23 is when I was ranked as the rookie of the year at the Coldwell Banker office. At 24, I was ranked in the top 1% of agents and I continued and continued to try and find more success. How can I find it? Where is it at? How can I get another award? And unfortunately, I had to hear other stories being told for me to find my story and get me back to what made me happy, which wasn't being number one. It wasn't another award. It was helping people. And for me, that is a passion. There's no one in this room that would be able to tell me that I should be thinking or doing anything else other than helping people. Why? Because I have a conviction within my heart that helping people is what I was put here to do. And so as I continued to post about these awards, I continued to post about the houses that sold fast. I continued to post about all of the extra this is and that's and whatnot. I became less and less happy. And it wasn't until I heard that cancer story that really made me step back. How can somebody who just got diagnosed with cancer tell me sorry? Sorry I didn't turn in the assignment. I was diagnosed with cancer. So I took a step back. And uh, at, at that point, I still had my brokerage and I, I needed to be happy. And for me, being happy was helping other people. And that's exactly what I did. My name is Jonathan Hawkins. I'm a father to my proud little psychic, a husband to my beautiful wife, a former Army intelligence officer turned top producing real estate broker, a sports fanatic who took years to discover my passion. The real estate community is riddled with stereotypes. I want to inspire a monumental transformation. I am blessed to work with realtors from all over the country, and it is my mission to help tell their stories. For too long, I focused on my work and my habits. Success? Sure. You can achieve anything if you work hard. Happiness? That's a different story. I make sure no matter where I go that I am always focused on giving back. We are more than one. Thank you. I, I, I want to say one, one more thing because I, I, I just want to reiterate it. You have to be happy. When I was in the room, I was walking down here, I had different pants on because I thought those pants would look better. I went back to the room and I changed into the jeans, but I said, that's what makes me happy. Stop doing anything that doesn't make you happy. Only focus on what makes you happy, what makes other people happy. You don't have to be perfect. You just have to be yourself. You have to be authentic. And at the end of the day, the business will come and you'll have a business and life that you truly love. Again, my name is Jonathan. Thank you. Let's give it up for Jonathan, y'all.